Welcome back to Hardcore Ultimate Iron Man. Today, Beneath Cursed Sands. We have all the requirements, and even the recommended combat level 85. And that is, no joke, the bosses in this quest are dangerous. So we are going to need the best that we can muster. And the best we can muster is also in the looting bag. So we need to get that stuff. We're going to be using the looting bag multiple times here because we need many different pieces of gear. The different fights will go best with different setups. And we don't really have many other options besides the looting bags for switching things out. So I'm going to get the things I need together for the first part of the quest. Dressed in our best for melee combat, ready for the first fight, our quest starts in Sofanem with Jamila here. She has a special item that we would just love. And what is that? An exclusive item just for me. A thank you for all we've done for Sofanem. Start beneath cursed sands. Alright, see what see what this is. It's a gold ring. Let's try it on. She tries to push the ring on my finger, and while doing so, slips me a message. Ah, the ring's too small. Never mind. What? Well, see you later. A covert message. Well, let's see what it says. Head east from Sofanem, and you'll find a camp by the cliffs. Meet me there as soon as you can. Sure. Random message. I will do whatever you tell me to. Out the eastern gate here. Conveniently located. And to the cliffs. Right over here. We've got a whole thing going on over there. We will get to that in a bit. Here is the camp that the message told us about. And what he says here. She was the spy from Alcarid. But she's supposed to be in Menifus. How did you get out? She told Osman she was done, and she meant it. But how did you get out? The same way as the citizens were getting out. By hiding in the dead being sent to Sofanem. Fair enough. But now what are you doing out here? And why did you give me that message? There's something very strange going on. And she's going to need our help to investigate. She does not have very many allies she can depend on these days. And we seem decently competent. Brave of you to assume that I ever actually know what I'm doing. We try, though. We try. So, what's going on? Citizens from Menaphos have been disappearing, and even the guards have been disappearing. Leaving the city, despite the quarantine still being in effect. And how are they bypassing it? She doesn't know. But she does know where they are going. 
just south of here to the old necropolis. They're excavating something. And there's something strange going on with them. She went to take a look around, and they're acting really unusual. I think I need to see this for myself. Let's go. We overlook the identifying guards and citizens. Excavating. How long have they been doing this? She's not sure, but they are at it night and day. They never rest. We should go get a closer look. Previously, she's been able to walk right up to them, and they didn't even care. It's like they're in a trance. Mmm. I'll go have a look around. We need to try to keep a low profile. <laughs> Even though that is not really one of my specialties. Prepare for violence. Prepare for violence. We got our water skins. Since a lot of this quest is in the desert. No big surprise there. We got guards. We got citizens. What are they up to? The work must be completed. This seems familiar. And they all say the same thing. Very suspicious. It all draws over to the blocked entrance to this pyramid. It's about to go down. So let's be ready for it. Two steps of super attack and defense. One to counteract the dragon battle axe. And one to get us buffed. Inspecting the entrance. It is blocked. Very completely. But it looks like it's only happened recently. During this excavation they're doing. I should report back to Misa. But we're not going to get away that easy. Um, hello, Menified Head Guard. You should not be here. Why not? The work cannot be disturbed. The mistress commands it. You mean the Devourer. This is all her doing, isn't it? I recognize her work anyway. You know too much. You must be removed. Down goes one of the guards. Thanks for the help. We we do need a hand. I appreciate it. First fight. Against the head menifite guard. He doesn't like it if you use protection prayers. So that's not allowed. But he only uses melee attacks. And Max is 16s. So, potatoes with cheese will get the job done. By far, the easiest battle. Well, about the same as the other one. But I did do this quest on another account right before. Just to test the waters to make sure I know what I'm doing. But down goes the head menified guard. We kept a low prof profile just expertly there. And we discovered what is going on. We don't know what they're up to, but we do know who sent them. A mascot, the devourer. She doesn't believe me. It's quite the claim. That is fair. She has hypnotic powers, and she's the one that put them in this trance. We have first-hand experience with this kind of thing. And 
stays awake. What happened? You were hypnotized, but you're free now. Do you remember anything that happened? You really can't remember. You have to think back to right before you were hypnotized. He had an audience with the pharaoh. But when he arrived, the pharaoh wasn't there. There was a woman instead. Red eyes. Deep red eyes. That's a mascot. <laughs> and anything after that? They were brought here to find a tomb. They unblocked the entrance. A mascot went inside with some others. But they never went inside. And then the entrance was collapsed. That's a bit of information, at least. Oh, and she also had some monsters helping her. They looked, they walked around like humans, but they had the heads of insects. Scarab creatures from the tunnel below Sophenim. Scabrites. You know where they came from? To the ruins in the northeast. He's going to need some medical attention. But we can meet up back at her camp. And we get a quiz master. Yes, please. So I'm going to take a quiz and then go get prepared for the next part of the quest. For getting back out to the desert, we've got a new fairy ring. A K P to the necropolis. We just needed to get in here the first time during the quest. Then we can take these stepping stones right over here. If we had a pharaoh scepter, we could use it on this obelisk. But we don't. Well, we don't. So that's okay. It's still better than taking the carpets all the way from Alcarid or anything. So I'll take it. For this part of the quest, we just went and got a coal and an iron bar, tinderbox and spade. Very simple. There's somebody walking out in woodcutting gear. Sure. Go for it. I think there is some teak trees over here. Not a great location, but I mean, whatever floats your boat, I guess. And we are back here. She was not expecting the Devourer to be involved with all this. And it sounds like she still doesn't believe me. This is a lot to take in. But it still doesn't change what we need to do next. The guard gave us two leads. One of them should lead us to more answers about what's so important about that tomb. And should we go talk to Osman? Why? He won't be of any help. She's, she's holding a grudge, and rightfully so. Osman was going to leave her to rot in Menaphos. Sent Caliph to his death. She didn't even know him. But still, we don't need Osman. We can handle this ourselves. There is Chemesis, the Pharaoh of Menaphos. That's going to be a different lead, difficult lead to follow, since we can't get into Menaphos. Probably the most powerful man in the, all the desert here, and very reclusive. Probably under a mascot's control. How could we get to him? No. 
basically no. There's ways out of Metaphos, but no way back in. Let alone into the Pharaoh's palace. So we will put that on the back burner for now. Let's go on this other lead. The Scabarites. Maybe we can learn something from them. They're from the ruins to the northeast. Right near the cliffs we're at. On the other side, perhaps? Worth investigating. So, those are our two leads. We're going to, to go with the one that we can actually do something about. Into the ruins. And we can do something about getting closer to the pharaoh. We need to deal with the plagues in Sophenim. Most of them have been dealt with. Except for the pox that they're all infected with. So she is going to go try to cure the pox. Seems unlikely. Surely the high priest would have dealt with it if it was that easy. Have we met the high priest? Hmm, that's fair. The lizards around here have bigger brains than him. That's an insult to the lizards. He, he wouldn't even get rid of the plagued animals. The guards had to deal with that. And they can't exactly cull the citizens to get rid of the plague. That'd be quite rude. Anyways. She has a friend in Narda named Zahur. A herbalist. And she might be able to help. While she heads over there, we need to get into these ruins and see if we can find something. And then once we're done, meet her in Narda. Alright. And we are off on our own again. Running down and around the cliffs. There's coal and iron here, but this is also out in the desert, so not the best place to be mining. Go through this fun little archway. There's the teaks and crocodiles. Oh boy. Very great. And there is some locusts over here. Just locusts. And we have some steps up into the cliffs here. And what looks like some kind of smithy. We got an anvil, we got a furnace, and we even have a well, which is pretty convenient. We can top off all our water skins. Very good. This furnace has not been used in a long time. Looks like it might still be functional. We just need to light it. Add a bit of coal. Set it on fire. And we are good to go. We can also search the well here to find a stone tablet. It's a message to Achem about the Zamorakians are approaching. This is the ruins of Olek. They're preparing their defenses because they cannot let the Zamorakians get to Skavaris's precious artifacts. They've been locked in a chest and buried it to the south. 
We can find the chest at the southernmost ritual pillar. And his name is the code to unlock it. So, Akem. Well, let's go find this chest then. Don't need a tinderbox anymore. And the southern ritual pillar is right here. Open it up. It is a seven digit lock. And Akam only has five letters. So we're going from letters to digits, and it's more digits. It is what letter of the alphabet? A is 1, K is 11, and the rest. And that gets us a scarab mold. Could be used to make something. Pro probably a casting of whatever mold it is. Yes. Back into the furnace. We've got our mold. And we can make a scarab emblem from our iron bar. Fantastic. And then we can use the scarab emblem on this pillar over here. It's got a slot, just emblem sized. And we place it right in. It fits perfectly. We just Rotate the scarab to be going underground, like scabrites are so known to do. Confirm. That opens the nearby entry. Of course, heading in here, it's another fight. So we will prepare all our potions. All that. Don't need the spade or the tablet anymore. Or these. Got anti poison. And protect from magic. Did I bring a prayer potion? Hope they're fast enough to deal with this. Should be okay. We got two scarab mages here. All they know is magic. And summoning a Scarab Swarm. Technically we can take damage from the Scarab Swarm. Since it uses melee. But it doesn't do a huge amount of damage, so... We're pretty much safe. No reason to fight the Swarm. Since it's just going to... Continue existing. Probably going to resummon it, even if we did fight it. But once we deal with the second mage here, we're good to go. Way over here, we can see the champion of Skabaris and the high priest of Skabaris. So that's where we want to go. But the door is locked. So we have no other choice but to head downstairs. And what do we find downstairs? A whole situation. We've got arrows flying down corridors. Just making a whole mess of everything. So what we need to do is run past them. And that was the easy part, because of course it was. Next section We've got two arrows at once. We just need to be hit constantly. That's okay. Just takes a little bit of damage, stuns us. Things could be worse. And on this route, we can actually use some alcoves here to wait for the arrows to pass. 
And then we are home free to a lever. But of course, it's not that easy. We need to pull this lever and then the corresponding lever all the way over there in about 60 seconds. So first thing we obviously need to do is have full run energy. So I'm going to sit here and wait. There's probably a most efficient time to pull this lever so I can run out here and get to the safe spot at the best time. How about now? Now a good time? Now was not a good time. We can tank the hits too. So technically we could probably be okay. Just kind of running for it. The arrows are faster than us though. So we need to be aware of that. But as long as we just keep on going, we can mostly get there. Ow. Ow. Run. And lever. Perfect. We hear a click. And not only does that open the door back above, it also turns off all the arrows, which is super convenient. It makes the run back over this way not as much of a pain. In a literal sense, too, because of all the arrows hitting us and doing damage. Yeah. That opens up. Not this door. It's downstairs. It opens up this door. We need, we, there, there's, more, there's more doors to deal with. Of course there is. Right here. And then we go through here. And now we have this room to play with. In here, we have many plaques. A statue. Urns. And a lever. Let us look at what we have here. Four emblems in this black, which we take. We got baboon, human, crocodile, and scarab. And this is a puzzle. This one, black here, gives us a bunch of hints and bits of information about which god came first, where they were, what they got, but where did they come from? It's also a bit of lore, possibly, with Osmumten who was a pharaoh at the time. The four avatars came to support him. And this is the, this is either the story of their meeting or just the puzzle here. So using all the hints in there, we need to figure out where these emblems go for each urn. Then the other four plaques are more lore about each of the minor deities. Born of Tumiken's dreams, there's Het, God of Health, Atmenken, Goddess of Companionship, Krondis, Goddess of Resourcefulness and Skabaris, the God of Isolation. So with those bits of lore 
and the hints in here, we can decipher the correct answer to the puzzle. Just a bit of using the information and how it eliminates other options. I'm going to go through that since there's really nothing to actually show about it. One of them has a necklace. These ones don't have a necklace. One of them was from the south. That means this one isn't from the south. Stuff like that. And once we have it all correlated together, we can put the emblems away. This is random for each player. But there is a way to go through it correctly. So for us, the northernmost is Crocodile, and then Human, and then Baboon, and finally Scarab. And when we pull this lever, it should open the door and not kill us. Click. Perfect. It does a bit of damage if you do it wrong. So technically, you could brute force it. It would take a lot of food. And that leads us to a spirit. Hello? The spirit speaks in our head instead of us just bringing a ghost leak amulet. That'd be too easy. It's been a long time since he's spoken to another. That would have been back when his body still had form. What brings us to his tomb? I'm looking for some Skyrites. The fallen remnants of his once great sect. Well, you'll find plenty of them here. But why are you looking for them? You know about a mascot? The Devourer? Yes, indeed. There's an old tomb south of here that she's been excavating and the Skyrites have been helping her she's looking for something inside but we don't know what as we are an enemy of the devourer and the corrupted Skyrites we are friends of him his name is Mahar how can you help when he lived the desert held many secrets, and centuries later, it hides even more. One of the biggest secrets is hidden in that tomb. It's the resting place of his father, Osmonton. He was Pharaoh, and then Mahar would have been Pharaoh, but the usurpers saw an end to that. And these secrets in his tomb? He had many luxuries, but also many responsibilities. And Osmond Ten had more responsibilities than most. They were locked in a great war, trying to hold back the ruinous powers. Their gods granted them powerful weapons. And then when the war was over, they had to hide the weapons or they would so they can't fall into nefarious hands. Two of those weapons are buried in that tomb, and that's what the devourer seeks. They must be pretty dangerous. The Devourer desires souls. She will not stop until every soul, living or dead, has been destroyed. And these weapons can help with that? Very likely. Many call the Devourer a god, but she is really just a demigoddess and does not possess the means to destroy all the souls, currently. 
the weapons in the tomb have a special property of draining divine energy and transferring it to the user. If used correctly, the devourer could achieve true godhood. We should probably stop that. But first, our original purpose here, the Scabrites. The High Priest of Scabaris, right above. He's being controlled by a mascot, but thinks he's doing the bidding of Scabaris, of course. We need to free him of the Devourer's control and allow him to rest. And allow matter to rest too. And he might also know more of what a mascot's doing. We managed to free the guard from mascot's control earlier. So that should work. A Clarin had an incantation to free someone from the Devourer's control. And we should use that instead of beating the High Priest to near death. Sounds good. Majan Manand Almak. It'll work on those that have been hypnotized, but not corrupted ox. They are beyond saving. I haven't met one of those, but sure. And he also has a key to the chamber in the back of his room here. Let's go. Search the urn for the rusty key. Used in Beneath Cursed Sands. A very helpful addition to the examine options on keys. Very cool. So we just run back past the puzzle, back past the arrows, up to the room where we had a fight, to another room where we have a fight, unlock the door, and head inside. We are not welcome here. I'm here to rescue you. Kill him. Wait. Majan, Manand, silence. Champion, protect your high priest. Fine, we'll do it your way. But not really. This fight is significantly more dangerous. Actual mechanics for a quest boss. Who would have thunk it? And it doesn't stop there. The difficult part of the quest. Or difficult parts, even. Next time. Goodbye.